This video is proudly sponsored by ExpressVPN. Everyone knows that level 1 is very much at the very bottom of the ranks and absolutely no one who was at that particular rank can accomplish anything huge at that time. Now what if I told you all that some protagonist even at that level managed to somehow become so strong that is that they do the impossible that that could easily be achieved for them. So today's video will be going through 10 low rank protagonists who are secretly overpowered. If you are new around here then please make sure that you're subscribed to the channel with the notification bell icon turned on to stay up to date with the latest anime news and recommendations right at your doorstep. Now, now I'm giving y'all waiting, let us begin with the video. Why don't we begin this list with an absolute banger of an isekai anime that aired last year that features a powerful low ranked who climbed his way to become incredibly strong. Black Summoner, I think, can be described as a good isekai, but the protagonist you can't get enough from. If you like, you know, the sort of like, uh, hungry battle junkie protagonist, then you have indeed come to the right place. The protagonist Kelvin always seeks to fight opponents stronger than him for a better challenge and the thrill of battle. He started out as, you know, appearing to be weak with, with skills he had that were so highly ranked, it gave him a massive head start to level up quickly and reach higher levels, faster than anyone else. He even loves to play the role of the villain sometimes just to provoke and get the best out of his the enemies, which I love to see. <laughs> You all know that sending some data over an unencrypted connection can be really dangerous at times, as any person would be just able to see it since you don't have it protected the proper way. And that is why a VPN is so necessary to have which protects your data to prevent hackers or anyone else around the world to take a sneak peek and that's where today's video sponsor ExpressVPN comes in very handy. ExpressVPN allows you to pretend to be in a different country to help mask your IP address, making it very difficult for others to collect your data. ExpressVPN provides only the fastest, most premium servers, making them consistently faster than any other VPN you currently use. So let me also mention that their VPN is super easy to use with a simple click away from connecting. They are, you know, also highly rated and recommended by other users. ExpressVPN is the VPN you all need today. I mainly use it to just watch anime that aren't really available in my country on Netflix. Simply using ExpressVPN, I can select a different country to watch any anime that was previously unavailable for me, and it always works like a charm. Hit that link in the description to sign yourself up and get three months to try out ExpressVPN completely for free. Don't miss out on this opportunity because you definitely won't be disappointed. How would you personally feel if you are, you know, level capped at level 1 and can't really rank up anymore, making yourself look bad and weak, but in reality, you are just actually hiding your extreme devilish powers behind a ring seal. Moonlit Fantasy tells the story of Makuto, who was summoned to another world and thrown away by the goddess who called him ugly as he really wasn't up to her standard. But upon giving him some power, he was then thrown in the middle of nowhere to find his way back, or, you know, just around, but the key thing here is that he could couldn't get anywhere past level 1. <laughs> Still though, he managed to get himself a harem of two gorgeous looking maidens who fight over him which, you know, people may find annoying, but at the very least, it does add to the comedy. This is definitely one of my favorite isekai that I'd highly recommend checking out. Re 
Reincarnated as a Sword is one of my very recent favorite isekai anime that aired, which focuses on two protagonists, who work together to create the ultimate dream team duo. A guy dies in real life and ends up reincarnating as a powerful, low-level sword, but basically, he becomes even more powerful once he gets himself a wielder. Fran is also another protagonist from the Black Cat tribe that is heavily treated badly, but she will show those no mercy if they dare to speak bad about her tribe. It got tons of, you know, it just has a lot of great action and comedic moments with lighthearted interactions between the characters and an engaging storyline filled with exploration and a journey to get stronger over time. You just cannot go wrong with watching this anime. <laughs> Now first things first, wow this anime has a lot of hate, but personally it's not too bad. The story begins in Endride, a world that is actually underneath the human world. So basically, you all might say that this is like a trap in a fantasy world anime again. Well, that is correct, but it is kind of different that I somehow really enjoyed it. So when I first found out about the anime, I was really excited for it. Now while Endride isn't really the best anime, it is at the very least interesting in my opinion. But it's something I wouldn't really watch again personally. A lot of the episodes have what we call filler or backstory. <laughs> Now the ending was very pretty cliched and predictable, but I don't feel like it was rushed like many anime endings are, and I think that's a really good thing. The main problem, however, with this anime is the characters, and that could lead you to not wanting to watch the anime in the first place. Now, you all might think that at first glance this anime is kind of generic looking with a very overpowered protagonist, and well, I guess this anime checks all the boxes that I just said. <laughs> However, it does manage to bring some quality entertainment in terms of wanting more out of it because it certainly is really good at that. The protagonist Teika reincarnates to another world as the strongest exorcist from his previous life, and while he can't really use magic like others can, he still has his exorcist techniques and summons that are very powerful and he can take down even stronger opponents than himself. Studio Blank, the creators of this anime, are quite the underrated studio, but this is actually their first first attempt at an isekai story and so far I'm really enjoying watching the protagonist just destroy others with such ease. <laughs> Now this here is a Chinese anime about a random guy who meets two monster girls, a dog and a vampire. Sadly though, really in the first few episodes these characters are just used in a fake romance plot to make the scenario more interesting I guess, but then the romance, the whole concept of it just disappears without really conclusion, which is the sad part. But I'd say it's mostly just a comedy adventure anime, and it's definitely a more unique Chinese anime from the rest that I've seen, but it still doesn't make it great, but more on the decent level. Problem is, the characters introduced just are so irrelevant to the story, and don't really bring much changes, so don't really expect any character development, and just enjoy a brain-dead anime for you guys to check out. How about this time a good Chinese anime, one of the best among the best of the Chinese series out there, about a legendary gamer protagonist. The main character is a huge famous gamer who competes in the esports, he got, he's got sponsors and the fame and, and everything that anyone could ever want, but then he actually decides to just take a break and retire from the MMO he plays a lot. Well, then he 
decides to come back one day due to his love and passion for gaming, but instead of actually going back on his main account where everyone knows him, he basically creates a new one to start from zero to hero without help from anyone and he will use his game knowledge to make it back all the way to the top as a low ranked player where no one will know that he is in fact the legend himself. Really, I think it's about that time where you just get your head around the fact that even simple farmers who don't have anything to do with power can still become what every other person would have wanted, and that is for them to be completely broken. There has been quite the trend recently where protagonists with farming occupations are powerful beings by using the power of, let's say, vegetables or even a mere farming tool that can easily destroy, let's say, a dragon, for example. <laughs> It's weird and absurd, but at the same time, it's quite funny and unique that we've never actually seen something like that done before. This one in particular, somehow I got stronger by raising my farming skills. It's not that great aside from its obvious low budget production with some of the worst CGI I've seen in a while. A lot of people actually do like it despite having a lot of issues, so you might as well give it a try. I really enjoyed Infinite Dendrogram. Yes, the main character is badly written, but the others truly make up for it, which is, you know, the side characters. <laughs> I didn't really care what happened to Ray Starling, the protagonist, but I found all the other characters so compelling to follow. It's an enjoyable and lighthearted show, especially if you pretend that someone other than Ray is the main character. But unlike many shonen shows, Dendrogram doesn't really surround Ray with people who just worship him. Ray is pretty much treated as either a friend or a lovable little brother. With the premise of infinite, you know, possibilities, the overall story is rather bland and a little slow. Yet, jumping from one piece of the story to the next, like a hot potato and the underlying story is slowly, I mean slowly, building up to something. Yes, pacing is quite the problem in the show, but it's truly an amazing concept that has its flaws but compensates through both imagination and inherent complex congruity. <laughs> Alright, now we're closing off this list with a huge fan favorite isekai and a show regarded as being one of the best in the isekai genre and it's none other than that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Like any other isekai goes, a guy gets stabbed to death and reincarnates, but this time he's actually reborn as a weak little slime, so powerless that he can't really do much, or so they say. What if that slime actually managed to absorb every monster skill he defeats and also take in a giant legendary dragon? to the point he becomes a powerful slime that can transform into a human and use badass magic and become a demon lord. Yeah, pretty much all of what I said happens across this anime's exciting seasons with even more to come in the future. It's too fun and too good to pass by on the show. So, if you have not yet watched it, it is definitely a must watch. <laughs> Looks like you just made it to the end of the video and witnessed 10 low rank protagonists who are secretly overpowered. If I have managed to leave any anime in particular that I thought would be a great show on the list, then please let me know in the comment section down below as I'd love to hear your very new opinion, or just comment down below what you thought about the video in general as I'd always appreciate the feedback. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll be seeing you all in the next one!